right class, so today we're gonna to be working on the slab roller. So what's the slab roller? Well, we're gonna make uh, flat pieces of clay. That's about it. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the slab roller. So it has sections on the side of the slab roller. This is your gauge, your depth gauge of how high these, the roller part is. So once you make sure that on both sides, you got a little spinning knob here, a little spinning knob here, make sure that you're, you're sure that both knobs are on the same height for your slab roller. Now your slab should be between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch. Half an inch is super thin. Um, usually for me, if I'm gonna, if I know I'm gonna carve something down, I'm gonna thin it out. I'll take it down to three eighths of an inch. But if I'm just gonna use the walls of the slab and not really gonna, I might be adding something onto it, then I'll make it a quarter of an inch. So the rule of thumb, don't make your pieces all thicker than a half an inch unless you're gonna carve it down a lot. Uh, and then if you're gonna add stuff to your slab, make it a quarter of an inch, so that way you can have lots of space to play with. All right, so, got my clay. Put your clay down on the mat. And you have two mats here, two canvas pieces. Now the top canvas piece is placed on top of the clay. Try and put the clay as close to the roller as possible uh, to make sure that as it's flattening it out that you have plenty of space on the back end of the canvas. You'd be surprised how many people don't have enough space. So what I do is I roll it a little bit just to catch the canvas and then holding tight on the other end to pull just to get the clay caught sometimes. Because sometimes the clay doesn't fully catch on the first push and then rolling rolling it through until you feel that stop of pressure where it starts to roll freely again so then you have your finished slab now when i'm pulling the slab off the off the canvas sometimes you'll pick up the canvas and put the slab in your hand like roll off onto your hand like this so that way you can pick it up without it tearing easily so that you can transport it to your uh, to your board a lot easier, it helps out a lot. Now one thing when you're using a slab roller a lot, take this out so you can see, you can start to see wet spots on the canvas. It's because the clay is damp, it's wet. And because it's damp and it's wet, that you need to make sure that the canvas has meant to dry out. So if there's a bunch of people who are making slabs that day, take the canvas out, you can flip it around, you can use the back side of the canvas, it's all the same canvas, it still works just fine. Uh, but try and not use the extra wet size because once these things start getting really wet, this clay sticks to it really bad. So make sure that, because we only got one set of canvas, make sure that you're flipping the canvases over, give it a minute to dry out some before you, the next person goes in with the slab. Um, or if you guys can put a few pieces of clay in there and make one giant slab at a time and cut it apart, it's fine with me mean, too. Whatever helps it make that you guys are more efficient in your class and in your workspace. That's cool. Just so. All right, now that you've got your clay on your board, I've got two clays. I got two bits here. And you can kind of see both. Now we have the fresh rolled slab that I've got on this side, and we have the slab I rolled, you know, about 30 minutes ago, just so that it has enough time to firm and set up. Notice how this clay is darker because it's starting to dry out more to this clay, which is lighter. I'm going to first take a little bit of spray, spray just a little bit on the outside of this. Take my fettling knife. And what I'm doing is I'm just smoothing out lines in the clay so that everything joins a lot easier. Sometimes you might want to smooth that out just to make your life a little easier. So smoothing that out like so. Now in your sketchbook, you try to have some design. You try to have out your design. Alright, now in my sketchbook, I've taken and I've tried to draw out a vase design that I'm going to do, and we're going to do some Japanese calligraphy on the outside of the vase design. Now for the vase itself, I've made sure that every uh, piece is on my notes, I did seven inches wide at the top, 12 inches long on the side, four inches at the bottom. This one says three, but I think I did four on the note. Set that to the side, grab my ruler, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the size of your slab. So, starting off on this fresh one here. Now, I know this isn't fully set up, but it'll still just take care of what, I, what I'm trying to show you guys. So, cut off a First, a straight edge, so holding the ruler in the middle. Cut off that straight side. Save this to the side for a minute, because I'm gonna need that. And then measuring on my side here. So we have So once you have your slabs measured up and cut apart. These can sit and dry up for another minute while you do so many decoration that you want to do onto the top of the clay pieces so that you can um, go ahead and get that design work set in and just uh, makes for one less step down the road. Now on the piece down here, cut this apart, let's talk about how we're going to actually put these slabs together. All 
right, now I have my slabs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up how to build your basic wall structure. So what you're doing is you're gonna take your slabs and they should be, I don't wanna say leather hard, but kind of close to it, so that they're firm enough to stand up on their own and you don't really have to do anything. Now if I leave it like this, it's going to fall down with just a little bit of weight pushed upon the side. So we wanna make sure that we're securing those sides act um, properly. So what I'm doing is first on the back side of the piece, where the wall and the back side of the piece come together, I'm gonna push down at the base to start pushing those pieces of clay together. You definitely want to get a good, secure squish on them. I'm going to take some of that fresh clay that I cut off of my other piece, roll it into a sausage. So a simple coil. And as I'm putting it in, I'm putting it in and pressing it in a little bit at a time. And just pinch off your excess. So then that piece is joined together. Now if you want to put slip behind there just as an extra security uh, precaution you can. Take a smoothing tool, something just to smooth all those lines together. Same thing on the other side, take it, press it up to the side, pinch along the back side. I'm using my index finger on the inside here to hold this in place as I pinch up the back side joining all those pieces together. Turn back this way. Whoop, starting to come across. No. Do the bottom. Come in with clay. All this clay is on the inside is just to bring up the joint. Now you have another joint here. Do we have clay there? Of course we do. and make sure that you take care of the outside as well because we'll make sure that all of our joints are sealed up properly and that there's no space in between. Now, once you have your joint securely formed, let it rest and set up for just a minute so that you can make sure all that clay is back harmonizing all on its own again. Harmonizing, harmonizing, Now. Once your clay is then set up, you can then come back and you can trim out what is excess, what doesn't look exactly great. To where then you have a finished side. So, <clears throat> slabs one more time. Cut out your slabs, make sure that you're measuring out your pieces. Take a little bit of your extra clay, make sure it's nice and floppy because you want some fresh clay to go in on your joints so that you can smooth it in, get into all those little sealed up places. After it's set up for just a second or two, then you come back with trim tools um, and, or smoothing tools and smooth out the design, get your cut, get, you can smooth out the design to get out what you want to look, how you want to look in the clean form and finish out your slab vessel. Finish out your slab vessel or slab piece. Good luck to you guys in the way that you guys create. I will see you guys next class. For hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, working on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or no, not not. We're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, group me that's a new one for me and steam uh, and my personal favorite YouTube check me out like and subscribe see you guys later next class follow see you later next class do your homework <laughs>